Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for the promise of your presence. Because you said when we gather together in your name, you are here. So Lord, help us. Turn the focus of our attention to you. Open our hearts and our minds to you. Make room inside of us for that which you desire to impart to work in us. So we do ask that you would draw us near to you. And we say from our hearts, speak, Lord, your servants are listening. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It's great to be with you. It was, I think, two years ago that I was here last time, standing in this very spot, as a matter of fact, at this service. But the liturgical season was different, and this is different. I don't know what it felt like to you when you were standing here singing, and the band was doing the open, opening number revival song, catchy song, good content. And then all of a sudden, your rector stands up and you start singing the great lady. Did it feel a little bit like culture shock? Uh-huh. <laughs> and not only does it feel like culture shock, but the content is very different. To read the Great Litany, there's a reason that the church has been praying that prayer for over 500 years. Because it literally encompasses the entirety of Christian human existence. Just about anything that you can imagine needing prayer gets put in those prayers over the course of phrase after phrase after phrase. For us, because our attention span is so short, it may seem long and a little bit tedious. But the more you live into it, the, the more you go, oh, there I am. Oh, that's what happened to me. Oh, that's what I'm afraid of in terms of the future. Because it's really all there, as it's meant to be. You see, the temptation is for Christianity to become catchy, superficial. To sort of say things that make me feel a little bit better. But I'm still basically the same person. And I go about my life. And how are you? Oh, you know, I'm doing really well. And if I'm a Christian, I might even say, I'm doing really well, praise the Lord. But that doesn't necessarily reflect everything that's happening inside the human heart. Advent, the great litany, the liturgy, the scripture that we're going to be living in over the next four weeks, in essence, gives permission for us to look at what's really happening inside of our hearts. And what life is actually all about without superficial answers, without catchphrases, and without any kind of simplistic religion that doesn't make room for terror, for doubt, for difficulty, for hard times, and for the companionship of Christ's presence, literally no matter what we go through. Because while we might feel nervous and a little bit scared about the possibility of difficulty, remember we serve a Savior who hung on a cross, so nothing's tough for him. He's been there, and he gets it. In, in fact, what you will notice is that when I pray for the confirmands, the last thing that I do amongst gestures, and I'll explain them later, is that I do this. Every time I tell a class I'm going to slap them, they're shocked. <laughs> But it's meant to say something extraordinarily important. And that is, is that Christianity is not superficial. And the worst that you can go through and endure, which is what the slap means, he is still there. He is still with you, upholding you. And not just with you and upholding you, but actually working change in your life and in your heart. If you notice the, the opening prayer, that's what it says. When we pray, Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. To be able to even pray that prayer is an admission that we do traffic in works of darkness. It is a part of our lives. That there is, in fact, a significant not a superficial, but a significant gap between what we know 
and even how we ought to behave, <coughs> and what actually happens in our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Things are not as they should be. Not only as a, at a personal level, but also at a corporate level, at a cultural level, at a national level, at an international level. If there's any time in our recent history that provokes a kind of longing for Jesus to return and set things right, it is the persecution of Christians in the Middle East. It's the racial disparity that exists in our country. It's the kinds of things that you and I get so used to in the midst of the 30-second news spot. We just take it as normal and keep on going, even though when we see some of those things in front of us, there are part, there's a part of us, if we're willing to pay attention, that goes, mm, I wish that wasn't the case. Advent says, life is not as it could be. We are not as we could be. For the heart of Advent is the willingness to face that kind of reality. Give us grace. We, say, we ask for grace because we don't want to go there. It's not an easy thing to do. Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness. But we pray that prayer with all of the courage that we can muster. Because we want to be a part of something that's different and new. We don't want life to be the sort of same old that we've always known. Just sort of trying to get by. We actually want to be a people who yield to Jesus. Whom he can use to actually make a difference in the world. Who actually can be people who bear in their ordinary sinful and broken lives the very light of Christ. But to do that calls for a kind of honesty that even in our church services we're not particularly used to. Most of us think about church as something that just helps us feel better so that we can just keep going. In other words, the mode is, I need to get by. And if, and if that's, you know, the best you long for and you can do, there's not something terribly wrong with that. But it's relatively faithless. Not entirely, but relatively. Because there is in the scriptures an offering of so much more. That, in essence, is even the meaning of confirmation. People kneeling and saying, I'm ready for more. That doesn't mean you know what you're going to get. It doesn't mean that life at that point turns out to go better. It may not. There may be, in fact, more difficulty. But the fact of the matter is, I would rather be a part of something that actually makes a difference than just get by. And that's the invitation. Because you see, if the enemy finally beating down Satan under our feet that we pray in, has everything to do not just with dealing with the big, huge temptations, but a kind of coldness that comes into our soul where we're no longer sensitive to human need, which means we're actually less sensitive to the presence of God. Because, as he said, if you've got it done it under the least of these, my brothers, you've done it to me. And yet, because we do live in a culture that causes us to live with the kinds of divisions that protect us from facing the worst of life. That's what our culture is about. It's the entertainment of tele television. It's gated suburban communities. It's choosing to kind of curate what you take in by the television shows you watch so you don't have to really see what's going on out there, right? Right? So when you say, okay, I'm ready for more, it's a big prayer. Even many of your other Christians will not understand that. But that's what we're talking about in heaven. The more. Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness. Works meaning not just when I occasionally don't tell the truth, but because I'm a part of something that is literally systemic, that protects me from the places where I should and can be serving. It's something that I've worked at developing, you see. It's, it's not just a kind of, oh, I slipped. 
It has to do with a really well-developed pattern of behavior. And a society that affirms that kind of pattern of behavior that causes me to live primarily for me rather than for Jesus. And the people that he profoundly cares about. To pray, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness is asking a lot. This morning, as I always do on Sunday, I get up really early. And one of the things that I do, besides pray and read the scriptures, is that I check Twitter and email. Yeah, I tweet. <laughs> and the thing that I tweeted this morning about Advent is that most of us would rather, I actually, not just most of us, would rather skip over Advent entirely and go straight to Christmas. Why is that the case? Because we're afraid of the dark. Because to cast away the works of darkness asks us to face those works of darkness. The things that we have developed. The places that affirm our own self-centeredness. Our need to control others. To make sure that our point of view is really the right one. And if you don't get that, well, I'm just sorry, you don't know as much as me. And all of the other ways that we try to develop a world around ourselves that continues to allow us to be the focus and to keep the spotlight on us and our needs and what we want to do. And if you agree, great, let's do it together. But if you don't, well, it's too bad. It's hard work asking for God to help us to do that. But it is only in that kind of letting go, seeing where I'm a part of a system that actually works, and choosing to serve, that life begins to break through. The key has to do with, again, in the colic, in the description of Jesus, when it describes him coming in great humility. Humility admits that I, I do preoccupy myself with myself, and I don't like it. I face the fact that my answers are incomplete. And that some of my surety has everything to do with me just trying to get going, as opposed to having that deep conviction. And that perhaps even some of my deepest convictions are just dead wrong. Even perhaps the things that I was taught in Sunday school may in fact not line up with what the scripture teaches at all. In other words, it causes me to come into question about who I am and what I do, and that is dark to go into those places. But to go into those places admits a willingness and, in fact, a desperate need to be led. To be led by the Holy Spirit of God. To be brought into something where I, in fact, am learning not only how to cast away the works of darkness, but to put on the armor of light. That's the other phrase. And all of that is banking on the very promise that was in the Corinthian lesson about God protecting me and keeping me each step of the way. He will never leave. That's it. Is it comfortable? No. <laughs> I'd much rather just go straight to Christmas cards and buying gifts and lots of parties and way too much to eat and drink and having laughter and time with friends and family. I love it all. I, I don't in any way mean to be a Scrooge. But Advent is here for a purpose. And it's a holy purpose. That is the purpose of knowing that if I want to skirt and just go to parties and send cards, that's in fact possible. You're still a believer in Jesus. But it may be that deep, deep parts of your life know absolutely nothing about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his power to change, to heal, to make new, and to teach us in the way that we should go instead of the way I would rather go. I thought about that this morning. You know, whenever we go someplace, my wife and I, even though we've been there bunches of times since we have been here to Messiah, over actually a relatively long period of time, because we used to live here, uh, we still set the GPS to make sure we're kind of, which way will they take us? So it was just like that this morning. We're on the, uh, where were we, the east-west. We punched it in, and it said we should go and get off at this particular exit. Larley says, that's not the way I would go. 
And she argues, you see, with the GPS. <laughs> oh, I don't want to go down Plant Street. I want to go this way, all the way there. And it, it happens just about every Sunday. She knows the way around. She's a native Floridian. We used to live here. We know the roads. But it's always a sense of assurance. But more importantly, we don't want people to come with <coughs> their opinions. And often the GPS is just wrong. That's the thing. It's just as valuable as we are. But that's kind of like asking God to take us in places where we don't want to go. We will fight with him. We will not want to do it. We will say, God, are you sure you're going to go? Come on. And God's <laughs> like, you're the one that prayed that, remember? <laughs> Come on. I've got truth to show you. I've got things I have, want for you to do. I have changed. I want to work in your life. Advent, which means appearing, God is saying, I want to appear anew in you because of a world that deeply needs this kind of light. Are you up for that? That's it. So sure, sing the happy songs. They're good songs. We need them. But don't be afraid to sing the also. Have mercy upon us. And meet it from down in here. So that you can encounter a God that's stronger than you are. And will be with you no matter what you endure. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, in some ways it is a relief to know that the world is not right. And that you plan to change everything. And that you have hope for us, even in those places where we have given up hope. And that you know us through and through. So, O oh Lord, we do ask for grace. Grace. To cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, that we pray. Amen. Amen.